Judge it again, Cars here. And what I'm doing is I'm just using now my round brush and I'm just going in and I want to show you how I put these strokes and I'm just blending the color as I go on the canvas. And these are, if you want to paint very loosely, you want to have some nice loose strokes in there. You don't want everything tight. You want to keep the color and build up all this texture. Kind of do this by lightly touching the canvas and you can see it doesn't get muddy. Just keep building this area up. We're just putting colors for shadows. We had we were working on the light and just really build this up. You can really change, you know, the way a painting looks and take it to be something else. I love painting on top and seeing all these beautiful new strokes and picking up new colors. You, know, you have some nice greens in here. And all of the colors here are, of course, you know, they're tense because they have some, you know, white in them, right? Color in white is a tent. I just want to show you how fast, if you were watching the other video, of how I can build that up. And I'm going to keep doing that. And it's just about, you know, having control of the brush. And again, I'm painting sideways. Not facing the camera, or the canvas. <laughs> Maybe could go a little faster if I was facing it, but... Okay, and now I'm building up this green area here. Get back in the shadows that I lost. And you can see I want to see those individual strokes. I want to have the canvas like really rich with lots of color. I, when I'm building up a landscape, you know, that's what I'm thinking about doing. I'm thinking about putting all that color where it should, where it belongs. What color am I going to put for a contrast? Just putting those colors in there, making them work. You can see, I'll show you, you can see all the texture that's really gone into that area. Okay, so we still have more to build because we have to build this white area over here and extend it a little bit. So the other video when I was working was about maybe 10, I think it was like 10 minutes of painting, you know. This is still not dry, obviously, so I can't touch that. But I just want to show you how, again, you can use one brun brun brush and build these wonderful colors on top of each other and have that trans, you know, that transparency come by so fast. And I'll show you, while you're looking at this, I'm going to get another canvas and we'll do another wash because when I have my um, uh, canvas like this, when one is drying, I'm always working on another one. So I'm going to take this canvas and let it dry. And we'll start another one. And for those of you that missed the other video, you'll get to see how I'm going to do my wash here. Because I'm, gonna, I'm doing the same thing with the wash brush. And I'm probably going to make a paint gray again. And let me see, I think that brush is pretty dirty. I'm going to use this one. Okay, I'm going to use my hack brush. I'm going to dip it in my water here, wipe it off on my rag, I'm going to pick up a little bit of blue, some white, some ivory black. I'm going to 
style that it made with my wash. And I showed you another video where I usually lay down uh, a red sienna border. I masked out my colors, so I might do the whole canvas, you know, in different um, variations of red, reddish brown. And that helps me with my values, especially when I put the color on top because a color on top of a red-brown is much more interesting than a color on a white canvas, like what we're doing now. Okay. You can see how smooth that wash comes out. It's going to add a little white to it, some more paints gray. A water line here. And again, we're just working working wet on wet. Pretty simple at this point. Just building it up. And I go outside at different times of the day. It's wonderful when you can go outside if you have the time and just observe the sky. All right. It's all these different colors and the sky, when I do paint outside, it, it changes so fast, right? Because you have to really pay attention to all the shadows. So I make these paintings out of my head, and I have a reference point of where I think the light and the shadow is going to be. You know, you can make that up out of your head. You can say, oh, it's three o'clock. Ah, the shadow must be here, right? So I'm going to change the color of the water to much darker. But working on this now. And again, this is like another ten minute canvas. Where we're just learning to use the brush and do washes, fast washes. You can try it at home. You can join me in class. My uh, students are going to have an exhibit of their work. I'm really excited about that. They did. It's coming up soon. I'll have it on video. It's excited to organize that. Okay, so we pretty much have our wash down here. I'm going to build it up a little bit more. Okay, and I'm using this brush because it works really well with washers and just making them kind of smooth. I love the hack brush, you know. In my painting here, I, you know, you don't have to. Of course, if you're using oils, you know, you have a little bit of turf and you have to wait until you're doing each wash because the bottom paint should also always be thinner and then you're putting more on top. But you have to let it dry. In other words, um, you don't want to have a thick lot of paint on the bottom layer and put a thin layer on top because it will crack. The bottom will never be dry. With acrylics, you don't have to worry about that, right? because the drying process is a little bit different. It dries a lot faster. Okay, so now I'm gonna move this over a little bit so you can see it, the back. I'm gonna start with my white. I think I'm gonna have some white clouds. Again, I'm just making this up as I go, just to show you a different color wash. Use a bristle hair brush, probably about a number six, only because I'm thinking I want to do it different different types of clouds. 
Maybe I'll have some clouds that are fading in the sky. But I'm going to go back over them when this dries. Because now it's a little bit harder to do the clouds, okay? And they're very light. And we, you know, there's different types of clouds. I want to show you, you can wisp them. You know, where they disappear. Some clouds disappear. Some clouds are a little bit thicker. Right? If you had a thick cloud, you can put it up. You can have a shadow at the top. But when I do my clouds, there's never like no, no kind of really a round cloud, right? You can build on top of it. Let me go with a smaller brush. But you really need a brush that opens up. Okay, if you get a round, you could. You could put a shadow on it. It doesn't always have to be, you know, that bright. You could have, you could bring some gray into your cloud, you know. Got a little bit of gray in there. Gray coming through. You could have some blue. You could have the color of the sun coming through. Whatever it is, I'm going to leave that cloud like that. The other clouds um, that we were building on were kind of different. They were a little bit heavier in the sky. right? But some days you go out and there's hardly no clouds. So you can wisp it in the sky. You can have also the areas of the cloud that are a little bit thicker and, and reflecting that water. You know, if you wanted to, we could even build this water up now more. Start making it a little bit darker. And these lines work for me, right? Because they're going to act for my waves. I'm going to put the color down. doesn't matter how I'm putting it. Because I'm going to change it. I'm going to go with my brush and go over it. See how I can smooth it? And keep doing that. Okay? So practice what happens when you stop with the brush. You know? You can also go with your bristle brush and drag it. And this is what I want because... Mine is going to have, it has a little bit of lines already. It helps me with the waves of where I'm going to put them. I just want to show you how the brush works across the canvas. You know, you don't want to stop. You stop in the middle, you get that line, right? So drag it all the way through. Just be gentle with it, okay? And then you can start, you know, we can go back and we can start building up the stuff that was in the back along here. It's kind of like mountain that we had. And you can choose the colors for what you want. I want this, I'll show you. You can make it a little darker. See how that works? And the good thing is if you, I'm going to do something on purpose and make it too dark. You know, I'll show you how you can change it. You know, so if we made that too dark, we could easily go back, right, with that white. I want to show you. We can go back over it. And I'm feathering my brush across. Okay. And I'm going to build that up again. That's actually going to be like a brownish kind of color. But I'm going to move this now and then let this dry. I'm going to start bringing in some more water down here and something lands here while we're getting back to this. And you can see there's different types of clouds in this one. We started this one. This one is a little bit more calmer, right? Um, I've done, I'll show you on location.
So, on location, this one, and this is building up. You can see the water. This was a contrast kind of painting. This was another one. So maybe you'll join me with my our pulley program where you can paint. There's another one playing out. So again, I'm going to let it dry and then we'll come back and maybe I'll see you in one of my classes or I'll uh, or you'll see you online. So have fun painting. Ciao.